what you just saw a bit of is the opening scene of what is probably the world's most watched Christian video on YouTube. What is it about? Who made it? And how did it get over 170 million views? And above all, is it scriptural? Hi, my name is Eric and I investigate all things biblical. This 14-minute video is an extract from a 90-minute movie that was made in Kerala by brother Joy Kulankara, who, by the way, has just written and directed a brand new movie titled The Hope. It was first posted in December 2014 by the Indian channel Gospel for the Poor in the Malayalam language and now has 50 million views. This is surprising since Malayalam is only the 10th biggest language in India with only 38 million native speakers. Then there's Dana K, a Romanian channel with half a million subscribers who posted the video for the English market in 2018 and now has 102 million views, pushing the fair use rule a bit. One Hindi version has 7 million views and another shorter version has over 3 million views. There is also a Telugu version with 1 million views and half a dozen smaller channels with views ranging up to a quarter of a million. If we add all the views together, we get over 170 million views, making it the most watched Christian video on YouTube in its 17 year history. Okay, so let's look at the main parts of the video. What is it about? It is a dramatic interpretation of the second coming of Jesus and all the scenes, including the resurrection from the dead, can be linked to Bible verses, though some of them are out of context due to the general confusion in the church regarding end time matters. In the opening two minutes, we see angels blowing trumpets and a rider on a white horse appears, followed by more riders until there's a vast army galloping across the sky, with ordinary people on the street looking up, astonished at the sight. Are these opening scenes biblical? Hmm, well, yes. Revelation 19.11-14 to 14 says, A white horse appears in heaven and then identifies the rider as the one called Faithful and True, and as the Word of God, which is the title for Christ, with verse 14 saying, The armies of heaven on white horses follows him. Matthew 24, 27 says, For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. But... If we read the full text of Matthew 24, then the return of Christ is described as a frightful event. Verse 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Verse 30, At that time the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and all the tribes of the earth will mourn meaning it will be panic stations among the nations they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory verse 31 says he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call so we find that there is a contradiction the idea of people casually going on with life and then being surprised by the second coming is the same idea that we see in American rapture movies and it comes from the latter verses of Matthew 24 describing the days of Noah. For example, verse 39 says they were oblivious until the flood came. The conclusion is in verse 44. For this reason, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. Though in verses 32 to 33, Yeshua or Jesus gave the lesson about the fig tree for us to recognize the season. Okay, then we get to the second scene, the resurrection of the dead. The books are opened in heaven and every soul is judged. 
Now, John 5, 25 to 29 says, 25, truly, truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and it has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Then we jump to verse 28. Do not be amazed at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment remember that this is a missionary video aimed at mainly india so we see a man who burned his wife to take another woman being sentenced to eternal death we see a father who has committed incest with his daughter being punished they are all cast into hell this is a very upsetting scene and one that western christians in particular will not want to see mark 9 47 says if your eye causes you to sin pluck it out it is better for you to enter the kingdom with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched for everyone will be salted with fire. This is a very offensive teaching by Yeshua. People did not like it then, and even now it overthrows the tables of the money lenders of the modern church. Matthew 25, 41 says, Then he, Yeshua, will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Right, uh, then we get to the next scene. We see a missionary being martyred, people who took care of the poor and needy, and a girl who came to repentance on hearing the gospel. They are transformed back to their prime in life and go up to heaven with the angels. We're at 9 minutes 27 in the video. They meet with Christ in heaven, the picture behind me. But this time, the Son of God is a brilliant white. Now, Revelation 20:12 is quoted, which brings me to the second big issue to discuss, the timing of the judgment. Because you cannot quote verse 12, but ignore verses 7 to 11, can you? Well, the church does. So let's look at what Revelation 12, verses 11 to 12 says. Then I saw a great white throne and the one seated on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. But verses 7 to 11 says, it is after satan is released at the end of the messianic millennium then we have a short scene from isaiah 11 about the lion and the lamb the tiger and the wolf and a child next we see the heavenly jerusalem and descriptions thereof as we find in revelation 21 and 22. we see beautiful images of the heavenly city as described in Revelation 21, and hear voices singing, Glory, glory, as the angels sang at the birth of Yeshua in Luke 2, 14. We see the high walls of the city, the bride of the Lamb, with its twelve gates, named after the twelve tribes of Israel, and the names of the apostles in its foundations. This implies the great merger of both the Old and New Testament, Next, we see the glorified saints in the heavenly city as described in Revelation 22, verse 1. Then the angel showed me a river of water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. On either side of the river stood a tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit and yielding a fresh crop for each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So, what do you think about the most watched Christian video? Before I discuss the three issues, I want to ask if you have learned something from it. 
to please support the channel by liking and subscribing. I also have a series about prayer and a faith fiction story, the Future Israel series. My next big investigation video will be about the revelation of the Holy Name and the timing thereof. Right, I've already mentioned the issue of the timing of the resurrection. Revelation 12.12 12 cannot be quoted while ignoring verses 7 to 11, which puts the messianic millennium before the white throne judgment of verse 11. More time should be spent on thinking why Satan is released near the end of the thousand years. Bear in mind that the production of this video in Kerala was under supervision of Dr. Michael Karimatom, who stated that nothing is contrasting to the teachings of the Catholic Church, meaning the doctrines of Vatican II. My second issue is that of mixing Ezekiel 37's vision of the dead bones of Israel with a general resurrection of the dead. Even a superficial reading of that chapter should show an honest reader that it refers exclusively to the physical restoration of the two houses of Israel. My third issue is that of Isaiah 11's allegory about the lion, the lamb, etc being placed in the heavenly Jerusalem. It's clearly out of context because of the many misconceptions about the next era. Replacement theology has caused this massive blind spot to the church, just as Yeshua or Jesus as Messiah has been a blind spot for the Jews. It is causing the blindness of the church not to fully grasp the mystery Paul referred to in Romans 11.25. When will believers realize that neither Paul nor the other apostles knew about the thousand-year limitation to the kingdom because it was only revealed right at the end of John's life, meaning that Paul thought they were already in the final epoch, expecting the end and the second coming of Christ any day. So friends, be encouraged to know that the time of the Gentiles that Jesus spoke about in Luke 21, 24, the two prophetic days of Isaiah 6, 2 are almost over. The third day is almost here. Let's end with the epilogue of Revelation 22, the invitation and the warning. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they've done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. And in Hebrew, it would have been the Aleph and Tav. Verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates of the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Verse 16, I, Jesus, Yeshua, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Thank you for watching. Shalom.